King Charles and Queen Camilla began a four-day state visit to Kenya today. This is Charles' first visit to the former colony as king. Now, the royal tour comes amid growing calls for Charles to apologize for almost seven decades of ruthless colonial rule in that country. The CBC's Abby Kudasen is on the story for us from London. So what's happened so far on this trip, Abby? It is his first state visit to Africa as monarch, his first state visit to a Commonwealth nation. He and Queen Consort Camilla are in Nairobi today. They were welcomed in a ceremony by Kenyan President William Ruto, and the royal couple also visited the tomb of the unknown warrior with the president. Now, Charles has been to Kenya before as the Prince of Wales, and we know in that role he was a vocal advocate of environmental causes. But as monarch, he has perhaps found other ways to highlight that issue without speaking directly to it. So in Kenya, he will meet with environmental activist Vanjura Mathai this week. But there has been some controversy ahead of this visit. Kenyan police blocked a news conference on Monday, just hours before Charles and Camilla were set to arrive in the country. The news conference was meant to highlight environmental abuses by British troops in Kenya. And these abuses are not linked to some distant past. This was about a 2021 wildfire, and residents have accused a British training unit in Kenya of destroying a large part of a nature reserve. The British High Commission there says it was an accident and claims that no land or locals were impacted. But there is certainly, Arthi, some anger about the actions of British soldiers in the country in recent times. And now, Abby, as you mentioned, King Charles is expected to speak publicly. What are we expecting to hear from him? Will he address those growing calls to apologize? Well, we're not expecting an apology on, for colonialism. That's been the sense um, that we've been getting since this trip to Kenya was first announced. The Daily Mail here in Britain has called this Charles's first stop on his mission to save the Commonwealth. And aside from the items on the itinerary for this trip, colonial history is very much in focus as Kenya celebrates 60 years of independence. Charles is expected to acknowledge the past, but not apologize for it. And that may happen tonight um, when he gives a speech at the state banquet. Now, there are Kenyans who are demanding that he apologize. Some want that apology to include the suppression of the Mau Mau uprising in the 1950s. That was when about 90,000 Kenyans were tortured or killed, according to the Kenyan uh, Human Rights Commission. And about 160,000 people, the commission says, were detained in very terrible conditions. Now, while Britain paid about 20 million pounds in compensation to a few thousand Kenyans, back in 2013. That was after a lengthy court battle. Many say that isn't enough. They want reparations too because they argue that is what is just and what is right. But we know that words of atonement is seen by some Brits as a slippery slope, that if the king now apologizes in Kenya, other former colonies will also expect apologies and then reparations. So we'll keep an eye on King Charles's public comments during this trip. But again, an apology is very unlikely to be in the cards. I do remember, Arthur, around the time of the coronation, you know, there was plenty of talk about how the new monarch could possibly help heal some of these colonial wounds. But his message, we have to remember, will align with what the UK government um, believes. And saying sorry hasn't been part of Britain's stance. Abby, thanks for this. That is the CBC's Abby Kudasen in London.